Hey everybody, welcome back, and we're going to talk about while loops. So a while loop, or a while statement, creates a loop that executes a specified statement as long as the test condition evaluates to true. So excellent. Um, the condition is evaluated before executing the statement, cool. Um, and it's basically like, you know, while something is true, do something else. So here's the basic syntax, and we'll paste this into REPL. So there's the test condition, some kind of expression that's going to evaluate to true or a truthy value, and then some statement which is going to occur each time this loop happens until at some point this becomes false. Now, an infinite loop would be if we don't put something in here or if there isn't some condition that's going to make this ever become false. If we were to say while true and then do something, it's going to create an infinite loop. So with that in mind, let's talk about looping over a sequence of numbers. From time to time, you'll be asked to do something from numbers 1 through 5 or the numbers 5 through 15. So if we want to do that, here's the way that we can do our while loop. So we're going to leave this up here. And here's a while loop that's going to iterate from the number 1 to the number 10 and log each value to the console. So the first thing we do is create a variable. The second thing is create our while loop, and inside of the while loop condition, we're going to say x needs to be less than or equal to 10. On line 7, which is inside of the loop, meaning this is going to happen each time the loop iterates, we're going to console.log whatever the value of x is, and then on line 8, we're going to increment x. So if you remember from the operators and methods section for units, uh, sorry, for numbers, um, x plus plus is going to reassign x to be whatever it was, plus 1. And by doing this, we ensure that the loop will, sh will close at some point. At some point, x will be greater than 10, and at that point, the loop will close. So let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. Now let's talk about a couple of variables. Very similar idea to what we just did, but it never hurts to think about these variables in more robust fashion. So we've got a start of the range and an end of the range. So while the start of the range is less than or equal to the end of the range, we want to console.log the value of start of range and then increment start of range each time. So if we run this, we're going to get the exact same result, just showing you ways where you can kind of put more variables in. Now, we have a challenge. We're going to complete a function that takes two parameters. Both will be integers, start and end, and logs to the console all of the integers beginning with start and ending with end. Your function should use a while loop to log each integer from start up to and including end, then return nothing. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function. So since we're not returning anything, we're not going to do that save to a variable. We're just going to describe what the console output should look like. So same story. Nothing's really changing in terms of the way we're approaching these problems. We read the problem out loud first. We copy our stub over to a replit or where we're going to work on it. Then we copy the test cases after which we're going to go ahead and code out what needs to be coded. So create a loop which runs if start is less than or equal to end. So while, I'm going to wrap this around the pseudocode. So if start is less than or equal to end, start less than or equal to end, log the current value of start to the console, and then increment the value of start. And then it doesn't return anything. So if we run this, we should get 2 through 5, and we do, and then we should get 3 through 7, which we do. So with that in mind, let's copy our now completed function, bring it back here, and this is the first time I'm testing out console.log output. Hopefully it works. Oh, we've got a syntax error. So um, let's see. I might just leave this code as is. The only reason would be is that this is not an error in our code. It's an error in the test that I wrote for the code. So with that in mind, uh, your code should say, you know, passed or whatever it should say when you do that because we have done this correctly. There's just something wrong with what I did in the test here. So I'll correct that by the time y'all see it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.